From late March, frog spawn begins to appear in ponds and lakes across the northern hemisphere. Soon, the eggs hatch and hundreds of tadpoles amass in every inch of water. These tadpoles are common frog larvae, and in a few months they'll have developed legs and emerge from the water as miniature versions of their parents. Common frogs are amphibians. If you want to find out what an amphibian is, click this link. In this episode we're going to look at British amphibians, of which there are seven species. We're going to find out what they look like and how to identify them. So let's start with one of the most common species, the common toad. Easily distinguished from frogs by their bumpy skin, which is usually brown, but can almost be black or even brick red. They're also rounder, with white bellies, coppery coloured eyes, and instead of jumping from spot to spot, they hop or even walk. Males are smaller than females, and in the breeding season you can tell them apart by dark nuptial pads on their innermost two toes. Toad spawn is laid in strings around vegetation, and tadpoles are completely dark. When they grow their legs, toadlets are just miniature versions of the adults. Now let's return to another common species, the common frog. Common frogs have smoother, moist skin. They can vary hugely in colour from browns to reds, and usually have a dark mark behind their head. Common frogs have large hind legs that allow them to jump over short distances. You can tell which ones are breeding males from pale throats, thick front legs and nuptial pads. You already know what the frog spawn looks like. Instead of being laid in strings, it's laid in clumps. Tadpoles are first black and turn a more bronze colour as they get older. Froglets are just miniature versions of the adults. Now let's look at some less common species. The natterjack toad looks quite like a common toad, but with one key difference. A pale stripe running down its back. It can also be a bit more of an olive green in colour, and its eyes are a distinctive yellow green. Natterjacks are a little smaller than common toads, and in the breeding season, males have a blue tinge to their throats. Compared to the common toad, their spawn is laid in single strings, and the tadpoles are smaller. This species is only found on a few coastal sites, and is therefore very rare. It's protected under UK law, so don't touch them without a licence. Pool frogs are a funny one. The majority found in the UK are non-native subspecies. But there is one reintroduced population in East Anglia. Our native population tends to be brown. Non-native populations tend to be green. Pool frogs are larger than common frogs, but their spawn is laid in smaller clumps, but their tadpoles can grow much larger. Like the natterjack toad, pool frogs also have a back stripe and are protected under UK law. So that's all the UK frogs and toads. But what else is there? The British Isles has three newt species. The most common is the smooth newt. They can be light beige to yellowy brown, their undersides are orange with black spots. Throats are either orange or an off-white and spotted. Males have an undulating crest and spots on their bodies. Their belly spots are also bigger. Females are plainer, with smaller spots on their belly. Newts lay only a few eggs per batch. Smooth new eggs are small and browny beige. And the larvae have short toes and brown tails. Palmate newts are a little smaller than smooth newts, but very similar in appearance. For males, dark webbing on the hind feet and a thread-like tail filament are the best giveaway. Female palmate newts are very hard to distinguish from female smooths. The best giveaway is the palmate's throat, which is pink and unspotted, as opposed to the smooths pigmented and spotted throat. Separating the eggs and larvae of smooth and palmate newts is impossible in the field. Now on to our final species, the Great Crested Newt. This is the largest newt species in the British Isles. Compared to the other two, its skin is bumpy and very dark, and the bellies are orange with dark spots. 
During the breeding season, males have jagged crests along the back and a smooth crest on their tail. The tails also have a conspicuous silvery white stripe. At the end of the breeding season, the male's crest reduces in size. The female's orange belly marking and coloration extends along the tail and can also be seen as a stripe at the side. This is the third species that you need a license to handle, so again, don't touch any. Great crested new eggs are bigger than the other two species and are usually white or orange. Larvae have long toes and blotchy pigmentation on their tails and are usually larger than the other two species as well. So that was our quick guide to British amphibians. If you want to find out more about British amphibians, check out the ARC website. In the UK, you can get involved in the National Amphibian and Reptile Recording Scheme and make a real contribution to amphibian conservation. In the meantime, we'll catch you later.